See the last class we learned how to define a function, how to call a function, and how to use a function results. Okay, now this is what we studied. Okay. Now we will study a little more on functions. So if you remember, we have said like this, okay. So if this is a, a function name, fact is a function name, it can be anything, okay. The name you can give any name you can give. But remember, you use the rules for naming variables, okay? It can begin with an underscore, it can not begin with a digit, it can have an alphabet, it can have a digit. A keyword cannot be used as a function name. All the rules which you use for variables has to be applied here, okay? Then next is we said, these are the parameters which takes an input to the function. What is the input? How many parameters you can have? Any number. What is the data type of the parameter of anything? It can have a float, it can have an int, it can be double, anything, it can be a character. If you are going to say it can be an array, it can be a structure, all can be used. Now this is, we said return type, right? This is what a return type we said. The return type, based on the return type, the system, when you call a function, the system will generate a register to store the result, okay? Whatever you return, that will be stored. What is the data type of the Z? The Z is of integer, that means here. In this case, what will happen? That will go integer value. Okay, fine, sir. Now, let us see here in this case, I wrote like this return Z. My integer Z, the Z is equal to 10. I wrote it. Oh, 10 will go. No, sir, I wrote return Z, but my Z is of type float, and I wrote here in this case 10.5. What will go? What type of registers will be created when you call a function? It will be created an integer. That means you return 10.5. What will go there? Only 10 will go. Only 10 will what go? Because even though your Z is of type float, it doesn't matter because my register, when I call the function, how you call a function? In your main, you will call like this int main. The main you will say here in this case integer x is equal to fact of 5, right? What is going to come? It is going to come. 10 is going to come. 10 is going to come in this place. Why? Because my register is of type what a integer is created. Why my register is of type integer? Because my data return type is what an integer, okay? No, sir, I wrote here float. Doesn't matter. Even you write float, doesn't matter. Why? Because here the register will be of type integer. Therefore, what will be stored? Only 10 will be stored. Only 10 will be what? Stored for. Okay. Remember, therefore, the return type will determine what type of register it has to create here. What type of register it has what create here. Okay. Remember that. Okay. The way if I write it in this case, I wrote it fact of 5 divided by 3.5. What will do? It will divide 10 by 3.5. It will divide 10 by, it won't divide 10.5 by 3.5. 10 by 3.5 will be divided, but the result will be a double. That will be stored in X. That will be stored by what? X here in this case, because one of the operand is a double here. Okay. Yeah. Now, what are the return type we can have? How to use them? Okay. Let us see. I wrote is okay. Let us use this only. Okay, now so z is equal to or like say float just to understand. Okay, float z is equal to 10.5 into a. Okay, I'm going to call the function right now. I'm going to call the function fact in bracket. I pass a. What is going to pass? I'm passing a means what I pass here right now 3.5. Now only 3 I pass. Why 3 I pass? Because the simple reason is your a is of type what an integer. Okay, fine, sir. I make it here. Cool. What I'm passing 3.5. What I'm passing what 3.5. 3.5. What is the return type is an integer? Therefore, I'm going to store it in a integer x. So I'm going to print it. Let us see what is happening. Okay, equal to percentage d comma what x here i put if i say like this what will happen a means what i'm passing i'm passing 3.5 but what i did is i received in a variable of type what an integer in this case 3.5 is gone there from here but you put it in a variable of type integer therefore what is happening it is storing only an integer part of it only 3 is stored therefore what is going to multiply 10.5 into 3 that will be how much it is what 31.5 31.5 is going to be returned but what will come back to me and in why because here it builds a register of type what an in. Why it built a register of type in? Because my return type is an end. Therefore, 31 only came. I stored an X. I am printing it. But no, sir, I made it float. Doesn't matter for you both. Why? Because in this place, a register is of type integer. Therefore, 31 will be stored. If you put it even, it doesn't matter for me. It will get 31.0 even. I won't get 31. No, sir, I want 31.5. Okay, so what are the changes you should make? First of all, this has to become a float. By that, 
it creates a register of type what float here now that float can be assigned to what x float. sir in this case if i say divided by 2 it is going to divide 31.5 divided by 2 got it yeah uh, okay fine so the next look at this i want to say here right now in this case is my return type is how many return you can have only one okay now i put a z comma 3 I put z comma 3 i return two values can i return no what will happen i got only 1.5 why because when you write z comma 3 the comma operator will solve from right to left that means only this will be returned for you three this will not be returned the four you can have any number of return statement but you can return only one value you can return only what one value remember that okay done okay now look at this now i am going to make my return type as void return type as void if you make my return type as void what is going to happen that means in this place no registers will be generated that means you can't store any value if there is no value you can't divide the result by two okay look at this and you can't say return also now. i just i'm putting error making error and i'm going to show you see no return why because my return type is what void done see next problem since your return type is void you can't put your void divided by two not possible is it void is a data type yes how many bytes is allotted zero how many bytes allotted what zero but what you can't do, you can't use this for any purpose. Therefore, in this case, I can't write so what to do, how to call this function. Okay, in this case, I'm calling. You can't divide by two. Not only that, you can't even store it. Why? Because your return type is void on the right hand side. Left hand side void cannot be assigned to what a float. I can't do it. So I have to remove this. Okay, done. Oh, x, x does not have a value. Why? Because you removed the x. Done. Sir, in this case, what to do is it that function will return nothing i call the function but is returning nothing i am not able to use it okay in this case what you can do one option is you can print it but i would highly advise not to do percentage d comma what percentage f if you want to float you can put percentage f comma z i'm going to run the code okay done now i'm going to say here in this case is float z i got but sir that means if the return type is void the result of the function cannot be used here correct now so no sir i want to use a result in this case what you will do you are not able to return you are not returning but you want to use a result here okay done how i should solve the problem a function can return in two ways to you values okay one is what by returning just now we saw by returning okay by making a return statement and making a return type in this case the function will be able to return only one value you return only what one value if you want to return more than one value what you should do okay if you want to return more than one value what? now let us solve the problem of bringing the z value to mean okay how to bring it in this case if you want if you want a value back to you what you do in this case is what type of value back you decide i want a value of type what a float float result is equal to you don't need initialize of result now what do you do in this case is if you say if you want a result back here don't when you pass a what did you pass you pass the value of a pass the address of this pass the address when you pass the address that means you're passing two parameters comma what i should write what in this case a means you pass 3.5 which is stored in an integer that is 3 is called stored but result is of type uh, address if it is an address it will be stored by what by a pointer and then it will be stored by a pointer correct and result will store the address will be stored by a pointer correct now what is p is holding p is holding the address of result now if i say p i'm going to get the address of result but what i want to do i want to store it inside the p right now in this case what we'll do star p is equal to star p is equal to i put z i came back i'm going to put a percentage f here and comma result i want to see what does it come i got the answer right 
So whenever you want to return, you can return in two ways. One is through the return statement. If you are returning through the return statement, you have to store it in a variable. Other one is you pass an address of the variable. In that variable, you fill it and bring it back. Fill it and what? Bring it. Okay. Let us understand this problem. In I just I'm going to draw and explain to you in what in in this one. Okay. So if you like my session. Kindly share, subscribe, and like. Okay. So let us see. I want to define a function to swap to numbers. Okay, now to swap to what numbers? Okay. I have a mean. The mean I have two numbers. Integer a is equal to five. B is equal to seven. Mm -hmm. And I am going to define. I want to define a function. To swap these two numbers and give me the result. That means when I print it, percentage D, percentage D, A comma B, what I wanted, I will get what in this case I want seven and five. I don't want five and seven. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass A comma B. See when I wrote A and five, A is a variable which has in five. It says address one on five. B is a variable which is having what one one nine. Which is having seven. Now, when you passed a comma b, did you pass a and b? No, no. You pass the values of a and b. What is the values of a and b? Five and seven. You passed five and seven. Now I am going to say swap. Yeah. What is going to do? I need to re receive it. Okay, let's say I purposely change the name of the variable integer x comma y. You can have a same name. I told it. What I am going to do? I am going to say integer p. Okay. Now what you did? By when you call the function, you stored in x five, you stored in y what seven. T temporarily took t is equal to x in t. What you stored what five? X is equal to y. What did you store in x? What you stored what seven? Y is equal to t. What you did in y? You put what five? How many values to return now? Two values. The for return is not possible because you can return only one value. But you have written out two values. Okay. Therefore, I am making my return type as void. But sir, if you make a return type as void, you can't store. When you came out of this, what is going to happen? When you came out of this, the system will destroy all the variable related to the function. Destroy. Turn over. When you came back here, you are going to look at what your a and b. My a is still holding five. B is still holding what seven only. I am not getting seven and five. I'm getting five and seven. Why you not write anything? You have to return two na values. Okay, that's what I'm going to do in this case. If you want to return multiple values, do not use the, do not pass the value of the variable. It's pass the address of the variable. This is called pass by address. By writing and a and and b, what you pass one on five and one on seven. You are passing the addresses. If you are passing the addresses, where it needs to be stored, it needs to be stored. Let's say x here, y here. X and y cannot be ordinary variable. Ordinary variable will not store an address. Therefore, what I am going to do, I am going to make it a pointer. What I stored in x, I stored one on y. What I stored in y, I stored one on seven. Integer t I made correct. T is equal to x. Should I say? Should I swap the addresses or should I swap the values? Is this what the value? I have the address of a. Where stored in x? Therefore, if I put a star x, x is one on five. Star x will give me what five. Therefore, in t I put five. T is ordinary variable. Remember, I'm storing five. I'm not storing address. Okay. Y is how much? One on seven. Star y would be what? Star y would be seven. Y is one on seven. Star y is seven. Seven will be stored in star x. X is one on five. Seven. Why is t no? Why means here? Why means this variable? You can't put the five there. What I need to put star y is equal to. This. I came out of this function. Once I come out, I will come back here. When I come back here, what I am doing? Automatically, I am destroying x and y. Okay, t is destroyed. I came back here. I looked at my a. My a is seven. The four. Whenever you want to return more than one value, use pass by address. Use pass by what address? In pass by address, whatever change is happening to the formal parameter, whatever change is happening to the formal parameter, 
using indirection operator will be reflected in the actual parameter. Will be reflected where in the actual parameter. Okay. Yeah. If you if you have a time, so I'm going to give you one problem. Stop the video. Solve the problem and come. Okay. So what I wanted right now, I want you to define a function that takes a radius, returns a area and circumference. The name of the function is circle. It takes what? Radius. But we need to return area and circumference both. By putting a return statement, I can return only one value, but I want to return two values. Okay, that's for what I want to do. I want to make my return type as void. My area, I want to take it in what? A pointer. My circumference, I want to take it in what? In a pointer. What I will do, I will fill it inside this so that when I call the function, I will pass the value of R, the address of A and this, the changes will be reflected there. Yeah, so make an effort, solve the problem. Let's see here, I want to pass an array to a function, passing an array. Okay, so this is my main. I have an array size 10, 10, 7, 9, 2. How many elements are there? Only what? Four elements are there. Now I want to pass this array to a function. Let's say in this case, name of the function is sum. Or let's say the name of the function is sum. Okay, sum. It's going to give me the sum of all the elements. Now, you know, when I say array, what happens? What is happening right now for me? There is a pointer called as what? A is created, which is a constant pointer we studied. Then we said what? Uh, 10 adjacent blocks are created. This is, we call A of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And if the address is 115, this would be 119, 123, 127, 131. It goes like this. And the first address is stored here. And what is we put inside what the values, correct? Now we put the values inside. I put the value here in this case, 10, 7, 9, 2. What I am passing when I pass, I pass the, if you want to pass an array to a function, you don't need to pass the whole array. You pass only the name of the array. But sir, when I pass the name of the array, what I am passing? I am passing the address. I am passing the address. If you pass the address, what will happen? I get only the first address, but I do not know where to stop it. From the first address, I can keep on going to the next, next block by adding one to it, right? But then what happened? Where to stop it? I do not know. Therefore, you must also supply the stopping. What is the aim of this function? It's supposed to give me the sum of all the elements. Therefore, it's going to return to me. Only one value it needs return. Therefore, I'm going to store it in sum. Okay. And I'm going to say here printf percentage t. I put what? Yes. But then what is my sum function will look like? My sum function will take what will take as a parameter what? It will take an integer. A means what you pass? Address. What is address? 1 on 5 which can be stored by a pointer. When an array name is assigned to a pointer, the pointer and the array works in the same way because we said array name itself is a pointer, right? And pass the name. In B, what is being stored? 1 on 5 is being stored. In N, what is being stored? What? For it. What is supposed to return an integer? One value. You have the first address, right? Therefore, what do you do? In this case, you want to find the sum. S is 0. For integer i is equal to 0, i is less than n, i plus plus, s plus equal to, when an array name is assigned to a pointer, pointer and the array works in the same way. P of i. Why P of i? When I write P of i, how it will be interpreted? Star of P plus i. What is P? 1 on 5. 1 on 5 plus 0 is 1 on 5. 1 on 5 plus 1 is 1 on 9. 1 on 5 plus 2 is what? 123. You'll keep on to star will give you the value. And return s. Done. But sir, I did make a change here. After this now, I just came after printing S. Yes, I am printing right now print a percentage D A of 1. What I am going to get 7, correct? But sir, now what I did was I made a 
change your size set here right now here print a person before returning outside the for loop i wrote p of 1 is equal to p of 1 is equal to 25 I wrote like this. And return as. If you write anything after return, nothing will happen, right? I wrote return. P of 1 is equal to 25. That means what is happening? I came out of the loop. I came out of the function. I came back to my function. And I printed the S. S is giving me some only. 10 plus 7 plus this. That is how much it is what? Um, 28. But when I printed A of 1, it is not giving me 7. Now it's giving me 25. Why? Because when I wrote P of 1 is equal to 25, what is happening here in this case? Star of P plus 1 became 25. P is 115. 115 plus 1 is 119. 119 star is what? In this place, 25 got the 4. Whenever you are using, uh, whenever you are using and whenever you are passing an array name to a function, you are passing the first address of the array. Since you are pass passing the first address, whatever change is happening to the formal parameter will be reflected in the actual. You made a change through the formal parameter, but it will be reflected in the actual parameter because array name is a pointer. Array name is a pointer. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. I hope that you understood that. Yeah. So what you do? Solve one problem. Okay now. Solve a problem. Define a function sort that is supposed to take an array. Okay. So you can write an integer pointer array. You can write it when you pass an array. You can also put a square bracket. Both are same. But this is an ordinary pointer. This will be a constant pointer. That's it. Okay. You know this. Okay. Next is integer n. What it's supposed to do? It's supposed to sort the array. Do we need to sort and return? No. Why? Because when you sort this array whatever change is happening in the array will be reflected where in the main that's it you don't need to what return anything because here when you say a of i here star of a plus i will get modified that means the array main will be what modified for got it yeah make an effort if not i'm going to solve it on this okay just stop that and make an effort so integer array any array okay is equal to 10 is equal to 10 comma 7 comma 2 comma Eight, what are the number of elements here? The size of the array is 10. What I should do? I need to put a 4. i is equal to, sorry, I need to call the function sort. We already learned bubble sort. a comma n, right? Do I need to return? No, because whatever change is happening in the formal will be reflected in the actual, right? So I am not going to return anything through this. If I put return, that is what? Void sort. What is supposed to integer? Pointer a, comma what? You can write pointer a. Or I can write what a square word. You can write a or any name you can write integer. What is supposed to do? Process part. What is the process part? Input, process, and output. Input will be taken by the main. Process will be done by me. And output also will be given by input. For integer i is equal to 0. i is equal to We saw bubble so i1. i is less than n. If you are no no, go and revise the sorting. I am not going to explain here in this context. For integer j is equal to 0, j is less than what? And minus i, correct? So we wrote j plus plus. And I wrote here in this case, if a of j greater than a of j plus 1, j plus 1, what I'm going to do? Integer t is equal to a of j, a of j is equal to a of j plus 1, a of j plus 1 is equal to t, correct? And I'm going to print it for integer i is equal to 0, i is less than n, i plus plus, print f, percentage d slash d comma a of, run the code, see, this is my input, the process and the output, okay now, the process part I gave to the function, 278, yeah, cool, very good, okay, now let us see here in these cases, I want to pass a string to a function, what I want to do? I want to pass a string to a function. If I want to pass a string to a function, what to do? I want to pass a string to a function, correct? So, I am going to say here, in the, this is my mean. I am going to say here in this case, integer, okay? Sorry, I want a string. Character a of 20 is equal to hollow. Take a string. You know very well, if I put like this, what is going to happen? a is a pointer and 20 adjacent blocks are created, right? 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this is 115, 116, 117, 118, 119. It goes like this. What is stored in what? 115. Here. And here, what is insert stored what? All of but remember, every string ends with what? A null character. I want to pass the string to a function. Okay, fine. If you want to pass a string to a function, let us say fun is a function. Whenever you want to pass an array to a function, what do you have to pass? Name of the array and the number of elements in the array. In a character array, you don't need to pass a number. Why? Because array name itself is a pointer and every string ends with a null character. Whenever you want to pass a string to a function, do not, you don't need to pass what? You don't need to pass the number of characters. Why? Because every string ends with a null character. You have to ensure the null characters existing, okay? Now, when I pass A, what I passed? The first address, correct? One on five. In order I should do, my function, let's say fun is a function, it should take a pointer of type what? Character pointer. I don't need to anything. I'm not going to return anything, right? Let us see in this case is okay. I am going to I am going to count the number of I am going to count the number of vowels in this. Okay. So what I will do? Oh, if you want to count the number of vowels, so I'm going to put a return type as an integer and I'm going to say integer C is equal to zero. I'm going to put for integer I is equal to zero. And how long I should go till I reach a null character? P of I is not equal to null. P of I I taught in arrays, string array. Now you'll write here a P P of i is equal to equal to a or p of i is equal to equal to e goes like this and i'm going to say c plus plus at the end i'm going to say this is a closing brace of this return words but sir i made a one small okay I come here and i'm going to print here this is returns a value right now i'm going to store the integer count i'm going to say print a percentage t and c it gave me the number of vowels i got two here in this case because i counted only this but Sir, after this, I just simply wrote printf percentage s a. What it gave me? Hello. Because a means what you pass 1 on 5. It starts printing from 1 on 5 till you reach what a null character. Correct. Now look at this. Now I'm going to say here in this case is I'm going to say in this place here I wrote before return. I wrote simply wrote like this p of 2 is equal to 0. By writing p of 2 is 0, what you did? You wrote star of p plus 2 is equal to 0. Correct. P is how much what? 1 on 5. 1 on 5 plus 2 is what? 1 on 5 plus 2 is what? 1 on 5 plus 2 is 1 on 7. In 1 on 7 star, I went and put 0 means I put the null character. I finish, I came here and then I said here in this case, I came back here. I finished my work and came back. C is 2 only. But when I print A, it came me only H. Why? Because whatever change is happening in the function through the formal parameter to the actual parameter will be reflected in the actual parameter will be reflected in the actual parameter therefore whatever you change here it will be reflected here it will be what reflected yeah